I recently picked up a South Bend Heavy 10, another one. It was actually in really good shape and I got a hell of a deal on it, but there were some issues with it. Main issues being we got some motor replacement that was done at one time and actually a new Baldor motor. It's a, I think it's a one horse or three quarter horse uh, single phase motor, which is fine. But it hasn't been wired, so I'll have to wire that. And then on top of that, it's got a couple broken uh, parts and pieces here. So you may recognize this. This is the dial in the handle, which is missing the little handle there, but a the little screw and all the pieces that go along here. My little thing. Um, what happened was this thing got tipped or hit in shipping, and what ended up happening was this guy right here broke off. So what this is, is when this all goes together, this is for a taper attachment on a South Bend Heavy 10. And let me put this together to get the bearings in there. This piece right here, this collar slides on there. And there's a taper pin that fits in there. And then that pin goes through there. And then this guy, this is what holds the handle on. That's supposed to be there, that broke off. So when we put this all together, it ended up looking like that basically. And we can't have that. So this would normally go there. This would normally attach, you know the story. But now we have some parts to fix. So this is actually a pretty simple fix. It takes a little doing, but um, I think it's it's a pretty easy thing to repair. It just takes a little time and a little effort. This is a 1224 thread on these south bends, these heavy tens. And so I'll have to cut a little 1224 thread on the end of this. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to cut a little stub. I'm going to stick this in the lathe with a, a mill. Mill that out. Hopefully we can get it pretty concentric there. And we'll get a new piece in there. We'll press it in there. We'll stick the pin in there. And then we'll thread this 1224. And we'll probably cut a new slot here because we need that little pin that fits in there. <coughs> and we should be good to go. All right, I have this guy in my buck chuck adjust true, and I was gonna tweak it, but it's running just a hair under a thousandths with a, a Tessa, Tessa Tats, whatever they, however they say that, it's a Swiss um, half thou indicator. So it's running just under a thou there. To cut this out, I, instead of a tiny little boring bar trying to drill it, I've got a solid fixture set up here. So this is a 932nd end mill that I got in my tailstock. And we're just gonna run this guy in there. I'm probably only gonna go about 300 thousandths, give or take, in there. Probably about up to the chuck jaws there. And then that should be good enough. Last minute decision here, I decided to put this in a, a collet setup to try and maybe get it down a little further on the run out and it's still with a collet it's still doing a thousandths run out so between my collet and my buck chuck there it was uh, almost dead on I maybe get a few tenths out of this but I don't think it's really gonna matter so fire this guy up try and cut that out and I got a phase converter and my lathe is a tad bit noisy so so there's always a possibility I can see a tiny little bit of run out at the very end of that piece there's always a uh, chance that that bent just a little bit when when I got tipped. And it does here. It's a brand new end mill, by the way, so it should be very sharp. Kind of going slow here. I'm trying not to let it jump around too much because, of course, if you, I don't know if you can see it moving, but there's a little bit of play in this thing, so it's not going to be dead on. But and then that that when that broke out and that shaft is kind of dished, so instead of being a nice flat straight surface to cut on, it's going to be interrupted here. And then once we get to our little tapered pole there, it's also going to be interrupted. So. 
Once we get past that tapered hole, we should be able to just plunge in there and take a bunch out. There we go. See, I don't know if you could see it jumping, but then it smoothed out. Now it's cut nice and smooth chips. All right, so we got that thing reamed out, and that was a 930 second, so that should be somewhere around like 281, give or take. But this is my little inside uh, Sterrett number 700 inside mic, and this guy is reading right at 301, 302, which, you know, not too surprising. You get a little bit of wobble on there. Cut the new piece. We'll do a slight press fit, and I might put, like, some Loctite or something in there. And then we'll repin it. I'm going to leave this a little long. It needs to be about 700 thousandths out from where it is, but we're going to go about 750. I'll leave it long, and then that'll leave us room for our, our knob, and then room to thread that. All right, so here I am. I got a piece of cold rolled. And this is my little Sakai ML360 mini lathe, the buck chuck, or a bison chuck, sorry. So I'm just going to turn this guy down to 305. We'll kind of give it a little test fit. I think 305, 304, I should be in that range, and then I'm going to try and press fit it in there. I think that's going to be pretty close. So I'll probably heat this end up and press this in. So right about there is where we need it. So I just heated this guy up just a little bit, trying to expand it. And hopefully we can get a good press here. So my Famco 3.5 seat Arbor press. Here we go. Looks good to me. Nice tight fit. Let that cool off and we'll see how true it's running. Alright, at this point, all we need to do is basically match, turn it down to match this guy. So our main shaft diameter here is going to be. I think it's 311, 312. Our length is. And I'll have to double check this against half an inch, so half an inch long. And then our. This outside thread is a 1224, so I gotta look that up quick and see what my major diameter needs to be. <laughs> Snug fit. Perfecto. See how it wobbles. So now I got this little die holder, and I'll just hold that and we'll thread that guy, and we'll see where we are at with our thread depth. needs to be. So I'm super happy with that. It turned out great. The next step in this whole process is 
there's a little taper pin that's supposed to be in here that holds this collar. And I got quite the operation going here to get this to work out, hopefully as close as humanly possible. What I'm going to do is attempt, I got my little mini mill, it's a benchtop German made uh, Webco, and I've got a little baby Albrecht chuck here, a 0 to 1 eighth. So what I'm going to do is chuck this guy up and I've got a tiny little center drill there. First thing I'm going to do is I have a, I believe this is a 2-0, yep, a 2-0 taper reamer. Here's another one, but this one actually fits in my thing. So I'm going to put this in the mill, set this up. I got it marked which side is the wider end. <clears throat> so I'm basically going to stick that in there, line it up in my vise, and then once that's pull this out and then stick this in there and then I'm gonna spot drill it with the center drill and then I'm gonna drill that to 120 thousandths with a 120 thousandths drill bit and then we'll go in and run the reamer our 20 taper reamer and then this isn't the correct this is close but this is a taper pin that will sit in there and then we'll smooth it off all right, so I got my setup kind of set up here, and I am just, I got my piece on my reamer. And I'm gonna lock that in place. Actually gonna bring my head down here a little bit. So the goal of this is to get close as we can. It's pretty close right there. And I know this is a uh, grinding vise. That's what I have at the moment until my new one comes tomorrow. So I'm not going to clamp that super hard, but we'll see. That looks perfect just right there. So I'm going to take this guy out. So there we should be lined up, now I'm going to put my little center drill in here, my baby Albrecht. Take my coat off here before I start milling. <laughs> I must admit this little Albrecht, this tiny little baby Albrecht is kind of cool. Oops. It's centered, so I'm just going to spot drill. And I'll bring in the 120th owl bit and we'll cut that. Alright, there we go. And the last step, of course, is here's our 2 0 taper reamer. Tapered reamer. Can't say that right. And I, of course, I don't have the correct reamer handle here, or tap handle, but this will work. So these spiral reamers are kind of weird because they cut in the opposite direction that they turn, so just need to do a little bit of cleanup here and I think we should be pretty close. So we hit our opposite side there dead on. There we go. Make sure we're clear. All right, so this isn't the, I'll have to get a different pin. This one doesn't quite fit, but it will work for now. So I'll cut that off. It goes about, um, I'll check here. It's not quite through the other side there. It's a quick little tool I want to show you, a little measuring tool that I used to figure out what side of the taper we were on. So this is a little Starrett number 269A, and it's a little gauge. So each of these little arms here are tapered, and this is just an example, it's a nut, but you can go in there and it'll stop at approximately what our measurement is. So on this one, when I measured that hole, it went from 120 to 124. So I could figure out which side was the the wide end and which side was the narrow end with this little guy. I just actually found this in a toolbox that I 
bought a while ago along with a bunch of other stuff in there that I've never used but you you look through some of these old toolboxes it's amazing what you find this came on this came in really handy for this job our next challenge is going to be getting our last little piece put together here um, so this little pin this is a eighth inch pin and it goes right inside there these things are all basically keyed in there there's half the hole and the other half of it is here and of course most of these were drilled by hand I don't know if you can see there but it is crooked so I'm gonna kinda see if I can set this guy up in there crooked and try to match that hole a lot of guys would just say screw that one and drill one off to the side which would be the easy thing to do but I'd kinda just for the hell of it I kinda wanna try it and see if I can actually get it to fit. All right, after a bunch of messing around and a really sketchy setup, we're gonna give her a shot here and see what we can get. I'm not super hopeful. <laughs> see, sketchy setup. I'll have to reset up that sketchy setup. All right, sketchy setup 2.0, let's give it a shot here. rethink this before I screwed up. Alright, stabilized, sketchy setup, so we'll give it a go here. I apologize if my hand gets in the way. Alright guys, I took the trouble of putting this all back together, so here it is, it actually works really well. Everything is finished up here and it works, it's tight and it's concentric and it works really well. Uh, while I had it, that taper attachment off, I actually took the taper attachment completely apart and cleaned it. Uh, usually those things never get cleaned and they're full of gunk and grime so I'd recommend taking those apart and cleaning them. But this thing is all ready to go. Next step is I'm gonna, I got a handle here, I'll probably make, make another quick short little video on how I did this. Uh, I'm going to put a new handle in there and then on to the compound and then hopefully we can get this thing wired up and running. Thanks for sticking with me through this long video. If you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comments below. As always um, I try to reply to as much as possible. My dogs are kicking the, the camera. Um, and if you haven't already be sure to like like the videos, they all help. Subscribe with the little bell notification because then you can get all these new updated videos and everything that's going on. And also subscribe to me on Instagram and Facebook. And no, just kidding, that's it. Anyways, till next time. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.